Hello, everybody, and welcome to NJ Pack Backstage. I'm your host, Latoya Chanel, and NJ Pack Backstage is where you, the audience, get a first hand look at what it's like to be a performer on the NJ Pack stages. So, right now, tonight, I'm excited because I get to interview the famous Curtis Blow, everybody. Legendary. Hello, everybody. Legendary Curtis Blow. So we're just going to wait for him to join in. And as soon as he does, we're just going to add him into this call. Um, for everybody who's on here right now, how is everybody? How are you guys doing? How is everyone holding up? You know, we are in unprecedented times right now. There's so much going on between the coronavirus and, you know, just civil unrest right now. So just, you know, chime in. You guys can uh, talk in the comments right now while we wait for for Curtis Blow just to see, uh, you know, how are you? Because, you know, we care over here at NJPAC. You know, we just want to make sure that everyone's good. It's not just about when you're in our music halls. It's about, um, you know, making sure that you're good all around. So Curtis Blow is here. I'm gonna go ahead and add him in and then we'll get started with the interview, everybody. I'm excited. Hello, hello. Hey, hi. We got you in, but you're a little twisted for some reason. I'm not sure if we can, there we go, there we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing mighty fine. Yes. Mighty fine, mighty fine. Let me let me fix this camera. That's All fine. Right. I'm 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 fixing my relational. So, can you hear me pretty good? Yes, yes. All right. Great. There we go. Awesome. I'm ready. Awesome. You good? I'm good. All right. So again, like I was just talking to your audience, everybody is 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 chiming in right now. They're tuned in right now. But first and foremost, like I just asked them, I want to know how are you doing right now with everything going on? How have you been? Well, it is um, something else. I'll tell you, you know, I'm going through many emotions, uh, painful frustration, uh, just fear, uh, anger, compassion, empathy. I mean, we are definitely in a, never in my life have I experienced not one, but two most incredible crises that is actually, wow, plaguing. Life has stopped. I mean, we are in the middle of a double crisis and it is something else. Um, you know, I, I um, you know, it's the 40th anniversary of my song, The Breaks. Yeah. And it is such a bad time for us to celebrate. Um, and it's so hard for me to celebrate, you know, just seeing what happened to George Floyd and uh, all the other uh, murders, senseless murders and the injustice and just the, the, the man, God bless the cell phone for all this exposure uh, of, of all this uh, systemic racism that is been going on for 400 years, but now we finally get a chance to see it first and for firsthand views of this stuff. And, you know, I, I'm just going through it. You know, life has stopped. You know, we're, we're, we're in the pandemic. We shut down. I mean, they're opening back up and, and, and you see what's happening. It's, it's like so scary that if you go outside, you could catch it again. And, 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 you know, my, my, my empathy and compassion goes out to all those who've lost uh, loved ones and family members and friends to the virus and uh, even the people who tested positive. You know, I'm praying for them every day that you can get a blessing and get through this, through the stripes. We will be healed. Um, I cling to those verses and I'm praying every day. But this is, this is, um, <clears throat> A time that's that's very 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 serious. I think God uh, wants us all to just sit down and take a minute to go through our lives and see what we're doing wrong with each other and what we're doing, you know, with our lives. That's that's not um, too cool. So, you know, we have the opportunity to change and and and. Um, <sighs> 
make change. Right. Change the world. I see the whole world ready for it right yeah. now. Yeah. And, I, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. So, you know, all of us work in entertainment, you know, New Jersey Performing Arts Center right there, you know, downtown in the heart of the city of Newark. Um, I feel like all industries have an, an, a responsibility right now to, you know, what's going on. I want to know your thoughts on how the music industry right now um, can assist in our healing or whatever it is that we can do at this particular time. Well, that, that's a, a pretty good question. I, uh, we as the um, blessed and fortunate, talented people uh, in the entertainment industry, we should be at the forefront of the support for the protesters that are out there and the people who are calling for change. So we are the voices of the people. I, I tell people in hip hop all the time, you know, we are the communicators, we are the orators, we are the spoken word artists, we are the rappers, the MCs, we are the singers out there. And, and our uh, expression is we are mirroring what the people say. So we are the voice of the people. So I encourage all the artists out there to, to, yeah, stand up, write songs, write songs. I mean, this is the, the Harlem Renaissance all over again. And back in the 1920s in history, when they had that, this, this um, uh, entertainment revolution, this art revolution of, 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 of um, poetry and, and songs and, and all kinds of uh, incredible artwork that came out of, of the 1920s in Harlem and, and all of the lyrics and most of the songs were talking about the, the plight of the African-American. So here we are again, and we need that same kind of mind state from the artists to support the movement. And that's how we're gonna get it done. I'm glad, that I'm glad you mentioned Harlem Renaissance because my next question to you actually was gonna be, what are your thoughts on this this focus on the african-american culture right now it's it's you know we're we're at a time period where we want to be here we want mm -hmm. to change and now i mean the culture has always been um something that has spanned across you know from the african-american culture to worldwide but right now in particular what are your thoughts on the focus of focus on black people just to be honest with you to focus on black people to focus on african-american culture what are your thoughts on that well <clears throat> um my initial thought on that is uh uh taking a look at history because <clears throat> uh, uh, number one I, I love history and um i i think that there is a lot of information a lot of uh, uh very pertinent information that applies to today if we take a look back at history. Uh, the, you heard the saying always, you know, uh, you got to know where you come from so that you can know where you're going. Um, but I take a look back in history and, and see the same kind of things happening and what the people did during that time to resolve the problem, right? So, um, Wow, let's take a look at slavery, the African-Americans, the slaves singing music while they're picking cotton. It's called rhythm and blues, right? Uh, 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 that was our music. But the songs that we were singing were about the plight of what we were dealing with, the oppression and slavery during that time, you know? Uh, then you go, like I said, the Hall of Renaissance movement uh, protesting in the 1920s. Then we have, uh, of the civil rights movement in the 60s and people like uh, Sly and the Family Stone and Bob Dylan and, 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 and even James Brown, 1968, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. That spawned this whole mind state, this mindset of this, this protest movement through the music of African-Americans that spawned hip hop. Then we have people like you know, Curtis Blow doing a song called, I, I don't want to, I, I want just enough. Why is it got to be so damn tough? You know, 
or, or, or Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and uh, uh, Melly Mel with the message, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. You know, it goes on and on to uh, uh, um, Public Enemy and, 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 and the conscious rappers of today. So uh, there's always been this lyrical expression. This is hip hop. Hip hop is the epitome of communications and rap, which is the focal point of hip hop, is the epitome of communication, the spoken word, how we communicate to each other, how we speak, and we talk in rhyme to the rhythm of a beat. But the lyrics are so very, very important. And we do have a balance. Yeah, we have our gangster rap, but we have our conscious rappers, and they are making a difference today. So big shout out to people like, you know, Common and uh, Talib Kweli and Future and all the young kids of today, Drake, do your thing, you know, let's get out there and protest and fight the fight. What, what advice would you give to some of the new rappers of today? Like you said, your, the, your music was about a message and it was about consciousness and it was about making change and it was about forward movement. What message would you give to some of the younger rappers or up and coming rappers of today about their music? Well, uh, First and foremost, I've been saying this for a long time, for years. Education, education, education. Education is the key to success. Education is the key to getting out of the ghetto. Education is the key to leaving poverty. Um, and, and it's so pertinent because nowadays, you know, there's so much competition out there in hip hop, man. You got every corner, every street, every block. Every church has a rapper doing their thing, right? So there's so much competition out there. What you need is an advantage over all the competition. And if you go to school and major in communications, which is a relative field to hip hop, speech, speech broadcasting, journalism, you got windows when you get there, you know, you got, you, you got uh, broadcasting, you have public speaking, you have politics, you have ministry, all these things that you can uh, 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 apply to and, and, and um, go after when you're in college, majoring in communications. And uh, these are the, the windows, the doors that will open for you as well. So you go and whatever it is that you want to do, rapper, singer, doctor, lawyer, you take that culture into the classroom and bring the classroom into the culture. Study the history of that subject, wherever it is, study the history of it. And within that history, I want you to analyze one or two people that were very successful. Study the steps that they took to achieve success. And then you go ahead and repeat those steps. And the greatest advice, I'm telling you, you too will achieve success if you follow those steps. Nine times out of 10. I'm not going to guarantee it, but I'll say, you know, just some good advice. Well, no, that is absolutely amazing advice. Amazing advice right now. So we know that you're a part of New Jersey Performing Arts Center's uh, Hip Hop Nutcracker. Yes. Uh, so, again, I love you in, in, in that absolutely amazing and we can't wait until the performing arts center opens again and we can have you back and we can you know continue to to tour with that so first i just wanted to let you know that i wanted to know just a little bit because you know we're talking about the heavy but i just want to go to the light for a little bit i just want to know when you created your first song like you said it's the 40th anniversary did you know that it would still be this popular today oh uh... There was, of course, the hope <laughs> that it would stay around so long. But, um, you know, I, I really wasn't thinking about that during that present, that time, because my thoughts were trying to be successful during that time, having a hit during that time right then. So my concept, the whole thing, the story was Russell Simmons came to me and asked me one day, he was like, well, the, the producers, J.B. Moore and Robert Ford, they want to know, what do you want to do for your next single? What do you want to do after Christmas rap? That was my first song. And so uh, I said, I want to do a song that has a lot of breaks in it, a song that has a lot of breaks for the B-boys so they can do their thing. 
you know? And because I was a b-boy. And uh, so that it, it was an ode to the b-boys. And so Russell went back to the producers and, and just asked them, uh, uh, well, this is what he wants to do. And they came up with the idea. This is an old philosophy record that came out in the 1920s that said something like, uh, say, bucko, you know, your wife left you and you lost your job and your car got towed away. Well, don't worry. The sun will come up tomorrow. It will be okay. You know, so the good things and bad things that can happen in one's life, just, you know, say that's the breaks, you know. Don't sweat it. And so that was the concept of the connotations, the multiple connotations in that song. Of course, you have brakes on a bus, brakes on a car, brakes that make you a superstar, brakes of chance and love and romance, brakes to get you on the floor and dance, you know. So that became the, the concept of the song and the multiple connotations of it. And that's why it was uh, sort of a hit, I think, you know. So. Are, you, are you still recording music? Yes, I just recorded a uh, a COVID nineteen rap freestyle for everyone, and um, uh, uh, it just breaks down how we should just uh, pray for our, you know, healthcare workers and essential workers who are out there on the front lines fighting for us. So big shout out, big love, nothing but love going out to to the workers sacrificing their lives, man, out there. Wow. Mm -hmm such an incredible time right now. So uh, I did a little freestyle. It was about two minutes long. And um, just just thanking everybody for, you know, helping. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. And, and, and while we're on the topic of COVID, I want to know how are you, what are you doing at this time to maintain your sanity with that? Wow, that's a very good question. Because, you know, the, the mental health, right now is an issue it's very very oh yeah wow critical right now because we all are in the house been in the house for three months and this is the most incredible thing you know it reminds me of solitary confinement people in jail except for you just have a cell phone and, and a television you know but you're stuck in the house for three months people can really you know it's a mental health thing it's, it's a test to your mental health. So you have to stay sane. Don't go crazy out there, folks, all right? Let's uh, uh, just find some things to do. I, I, I have some encouraging words because, you know, we are all starting to open up and uh, the cities are opening back up, stores are opening back up, and, and it seems like we're trying to move back into the, that direction, but there's a whole lot of fear that, that, that you know, that the COVID virus will resurface and so um i just want to say some encouraging words that there will be a day where we'll get back to normal and i look forward to that day and i know that uh, uh things are shut down now i mean how are we going to do concerts how are we going to go to church how are we going to go to the baseball and football and basketball games you know all these things but soon it will get back to normal and then I think we are going to party like it's 1999. <laughs> well, and I'm so glad you said that because, you know, working in performing arts, we can't wait. Everything is all about, you know, getting everyone together and everyone being together and having a good time. So we definitely can't wait. Like I said, we can't wait to have you back on our stages and to be able to do that. A question I ask all of our artists, you know, we want to know, for us people who, who don't get on the stage often and who don't perform often, what is it like? What is your last thought before going on stage in front of a crowd? Hmm. Oh, this is a very good question. I, 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 I usually pray uh, before I go on stage. The last 20 years I've been praying right before I go on stage. But there is a feeling of uh, it's an emotional time. It's, it's a time where you're going through uh, the emotions of fear, the emotions, your ego, and you know you, you have to make your ego take over your fear. So that, that, that will stop the butterflies and everything. Uh, but 
once I hear the roar of that crowd, when they say, all right, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mr. Curtis Blow, and the crowd go, oh, that's a wrap. That's the best feeling in the world. And you go out there feeling loved, you know, and, and you do your best. Yeah. So it's, it's not a feeling like that. Not a feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So out of, out of, out of 40 years, out of your, the span of your career, do you have a favorite song that you oh, really my, my very first one is the Christmas rap. It's my favorite. It started mm -hmm. off and um, tells a story about, of course, uh, 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 Santa Claus visiting a home on Christmas Eve. Then he goes and parties with the party and he gives everybody presents and then goes back to uh, the North Pole. But, um, you know, Christmas is the birth of Christ. And um, my first song was about the birth of Christ. And I'm so blessed and fortunate to have made that song. And, and now I realize that how special it was um, to hip hop, uh, you know, being a classic and they play it every year, every, it's an annual classic. They play it like Nat King Cole. And I just thank all the DJs, radio DJs out there across the country who made it a classic, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for representing and playing that song. But that is my favorite, my baby, my first one. Okay, artists of today, artists of today. I mean, you are one of the originals. Artists of today, who are some of your favorites that you listen to today? Well, I, I pretty much like them all. There's, there's, there's nobody out there that I don't like because, you know, it's my thing. I love everyone. <laughs> but I think Drake is doing his thing. Um, Future. Um, wow, Kanye West, Nas. So many, so many rappers. Uh, Jay Z. Uh, oh, Kendrick Lamar is doing his thing. So yeah. And you said you're still in the studio. Anybody that you would want to work with now? Oh, uh, any one of them. Any one of them. I, I think Kanye West is doing his thing with the uh, Sunday service, and, and that's great. But um, you know, who knows? Who knows the future? Hopefully. Yeah. Yes, when everything opens back up, we'll we'll have a maybe a, a new collaboration with Curtis yep. Blow. That, <laughs> that would that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, I want to know. So you were talking about education for you know some of the up and coming rappers, and you were talking about how they definitely need to have um, uh, formal education so that they can bring the classroom. I, I, I want to make sure I got it right so that they can bring, go into the classroom and bring the mm -hmm. class out into the streets. Mm -hmm. I wanna, what, at this particular time with everything that's going on, what is the best message that is needed right now? So if we had the ultimate song, so for instance, you talked about the Harlem Renaissance, you talked about even we had self-destruction when things were going on, you know, mm -hmm. uh, years ago. What would be, in your eyes, the best message that we could have right now in a rap song? Um, I, I, I think we should look back at that song, The Message by Melly Mel and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. That's pertinent today. Um, there are many songs, I don't want to quote them because some of them are controversial and um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But do your research. There's a lot of good stuff by Talib, Kweli, Common, uh, Nas is doing his thing, Kendrick Lamar, all these cats, you know, just go out there. You know, uh, Nick Cannon just did a rap that was incredible called I Can't Breathe Again. That's, that's a good look. And LL Cool J also did a great rap um, talking about the, uh, what the people are protesting for today. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. You just need to do the research uh, and just go on YouTube, go on Google, search, you know. It's all at your fingertips. Ask Siri. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. You mentioned controversial music. 
really quick before, because unfortunately our interview is coming to an end, but really quick, what are your thoughts on censoring music, especially at this particular time? Uh, well, you know, we are at the point with all the protests and everything where I think freedom of speech is, is, is the top priority. I think we're going to have a fight when you start to fight against the lyrics and stuff like that. Um, but um, I, I, do, I do say this, it's your responsibility, you as the MC, you as the rapper, to be responsible with your lyrics now because it's very, very critical and crucial right now. So I would like to say this, that, you know, don't repay hate for hate. That only multiplies hate. So only love can conquer hate. That's all I got to say. On that note, I don't even have any other questions. I mean, that that's an amazing message to leave all of our viewers with. First and foremost, again, just thank you so much for doing this interview today. We thank you so much for the work that you are doing with New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Again, we can't wait until everything opens back up and we see you again and we can have you, you know, back in the house again. And just, you know, peace and blessings to you with everything that you've been doing. You said you're back in studio. You just recorded, yes. you know, just the other day. Just as, as a last sign off, any last thing that you want uh, your fans who are, are completely, you know, in our comments right now, who, who love you, any last thing that you would want them to know? Oh, just love, love, love. I love you guys, all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me all these years. And uh, let me say this, you guys are not my fans anymore. No more fans. You're my friends now. All right. So I love you. I love you. And I'll see you real soon. KurtBlow.com. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for today. And we look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. For Bye -bye. everyone who turned in, we just had one of the greatest, Mr. O.G. Curtis Blow, who actually did an interview with us today, shared some gems with us, shared some wisdom with us today, and hopefully... You know, his message of love is one that can go across the world right now. It's something that we all need. It's something that uh, at this particular time with everything that is that is going on that we need to implement in our da daily lives. So, again, my name is Latoya Chanel. This is New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Back thank you for tuning in today. And thank you for turning, tuning in every other Tuesday. We'll be back soon. Love on one another. And stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.